click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, here in this particular video we will learn the design steps for multi-stage amplifier. Rather in single stage amplifier as well as multi-stage amplifier, the design steps are same for each stage. So if we follow these steps, then it will be very easier to get the design of multi-stage amplifier. The steps that we have to follow for design of multi-stage amplifier. First step is calculation of RD or RC. RD in terms of field effect transistor and RC in terms of bipolar junction transistor that is BJT. When we'll have to use BJT, when we'll have to use FAT that will be considered later on. Second step is calculation of Q point and third step is calculation of emitter resistance or source resistance. Source resistance in terms of FET, emitter resistance in terms of BJT. Fourth one is calculation of R1 and R2 that is input resistance. In terms of FET, we directly consider RG is equal to 1 mega ohm. Fifth is calculation of all the coupling capacitors that is input coupling capacitor, output coupling capacitor and if bypass capacitor is provided to increase the gain. Let us consider initially very crucial part is selection of the transistor. Which transistor we have to select and why we have to select that particular transistor in this particular slide we will get cleared about it. If gain is greater than 100 then we will have to select BC547B if we are using bipolar junction transistor that is BJT. If gain is required to be less than 100 then we will use BC547A which is nothing but type of BJT. For FET we will use only one type of FET that is BFW11 which specifications you should know each and every specification related to BJT as well as FET. I am providing that particular specification even if the data sheet is not provided you must know the few terminologies few parameters related to the rating of the transistors okay as far as BC547A is concerned HIE is equal to 2.7 kilo ohm HFE AC is equal to 220 then HFE DC is equal to 180 for BC547B we will use HIE is equal to 4.5 kilo ohm, HFE AC is equal to 330 and HFE DC is equal to 290. As far as FET is concerned we have only one type of FET to learn as a design then we will use only BFW11 and their parameters are RD that is nothing but dynamic output resistance that is 50 kilo ohm then GMO that is offset transconductance that is nothing but 5600 micro mo VP is equal to minus 2.5 volts and IDSS is 7 milliampere with these all the specifications we will move further for the design steps for the amplifier initially you have to draw the simple circuit diagram which comprises all the passive components that is resistances and the coupling capacitors along with the active component that is BJT or FAT. If we are using BC547A X is nothing but A or B depending on the gain specification. We can replace this BJT by FET as well if the requirement of gain is less than 10 or less than 20. Let us move to the steps of this design. First step is calculation of output resistance. As far as output resistance is concerned it is nothing but the collector resistance or drain resistance in FET and BJT. When I am taking AV is equal to minus HIE divided by HFE into RC this is nothing but the BJT ka gain formula for bypass capacitor. Then I can easily get the value of RC from this particular calculation because AV is will be given HIE is nothing but the design parameter HFE is nothing but the AC value of HFE that we have to take. For BC547A we have to take 220. For BC547B we have to take 330. So AC specification that you have to consider for HFE not DC mind well. Then we will move further for calculation of Q point. As far as calculation of Q point is concerned we just have to take the two parameters that is nothing but 
VCEQ and ICQ. Now how to calculate the values of VCEQ? We will use one term that is called as midpoint biasing. Okay, in the midpoint point biasing we will use VCEQ is in between exactly middle point of VCC and 0. So that's why we will use VCC divided by 2 is nothing but VCEQ. We will make use of VRE is equal to 10% of VCC in the design perspective and with this particular calculation we will directly apply KVL for the output side then we will be getting VCC minus ICRC minus VRE minus VCEQ is equal to 0. In this particular equation we all know that what is VCC, what is ICRC, what is VRE and what is VCEQ. Only IC is unknown for that then we will calculate easily what is the value of ICQ that is nothing but the quincent parameter of the current. Then we will move further for the expression of the Q point. This Q point can be written as VCEQ comma ICQ. We all got the value of VCEQ. We have calculated the value of ICQ. Then we can easily formulate this Q point as VCEQ comma ICQ as X and Y coordinate respectively. Third step comes as calculation of RE. So I know that VRE is 10% of VCC that we have calculated. Suppose VCC is 20 volt, then we'll be getting VRE as 2 volts. So with this VRE calculation, I know that what is the value of IC. Just previously in the calculation of Q point, we have decided what is the value of IC. Then we can easily calculate the value of RE. Okay. Once we get the value of RE, we will standardize this value of RE as RE slash 0.25 watt. Okay. As this is small signal analysis, we are using low power rating wala resistance. So RE standard is equal to RE slash 0.25 watt. Then we will move further to calculate only two parameters left out of these four resistances that is nothing but R1 and R2. We will make use of the stability factor which will be given from the customer point of view that stability factor may be less than 10, may be 8 or may be 7 as per given. If it is not given then use the stability factor which is much more less than 10. You can consider it as 6, you can consider it as 7 because we all know that if stability factor is less then our circuit is more stable because we want to design our circuit which should be more and more stable we will make use of potential divider biasing and that's why we have to calculate the value of R1 and R2. We will make use of this particular formula for stability factor for especially for voltage divider biasing 1 plus RB upon RE is equal to stability factor. Now out of these three parameters S is known to us that is given to us RE we already have calculated we just have to calculate the value of RB. RB is nothing but the parallel combination of R1 and R2. Now question arises how to calculate the value of R1 and R2 once we get the value of RB. Okay what we will do I know that the current flowing through the base is very very less. We can neglect that part because that is in terms of micro ampere. If that current multiplied by this resistance RB we will be getting nearly equal to 0.01 volt or 0.02 volts and so on. So that particular voltage I can easily neglect and we will say that this VTH is nothing but the voltage across base 2 emitter and the voltage across RE. Voltage across RE we already have calculated and VBE we all know that it's nothing but 0.7 if you are using silicon that will be 0.2 or 0.3 if you are using germanium transistor. Generally germanium transistor is not in use. We are using BC547 A and B as silicon transistor. So we will make use of VBE is equal to 0.7. So we all know that what is the value of BTH by using these two values. So what we will use RB is equal to parallel combination of R1 and R2 that we all know. R1 into R2 divided by R1 plus R2 and we all know that what is the value of VTH that is nothing but Thevenin's equivalent voltage from VCC as the DC source. So it's nothing but the by voltage divider biasing. We all know that the formula of VTH is equal to R2 upon R1 plus R2 multiplied by VCC. Now in this particular case from these two formulas we can say that R2 upon R1 plus R2 as we all know that 
rb is equal to r1 into vth upon vcc vth is known to us vcc which has been given rb we have already calculated so our only one job is to calculate the value of r1 once we get the value of r1 we can easily get the value of r2 as well from this either this formula or this particular formula any one formula will give you the value of r2 provided r1 is already calculated okay once we get the value of r1 and r2 we will standardize these resistances R1 and R2. Make sure that out of all those four resistances, we will take RC at higher side, we will take RE at lower side, we will take R1 at higher side and we will take R2 at lower side. For example, if we get the calculated value of RC as 3.5 kilo ohm, then we will take this value higher side to 3.5 kilo ohm that means 3.6 kilo ohm or 3.9 kilo ohm as a standard value if 3.5 is emitter resistance then we will take 3.3 kilo ohm that is at lower side value and so on once we have calculated the value of all resistances we will move ahead for the value of capacitances let's take c1 as input coupling capacitor for input coupling capacitor we all know that Frequency is equal to 1 upon 2 pi RC that is nothing but the lower cutoff frequency. So in this low frequency analysis, we will take FL is equal to 20 Hertz if it is not given. If it is given, you take that particular value either of 10 Hertz or 15 Hertz and so on. We will take the value of C1 is equal to 1 upon 2 pi FL into RI. We will be getting RI in two different ways if the circuit if the circuit is unbypassed capacitor then we will be getting hie plus 1 plus beta times re multiplied by parallel to r1 parallel to r2 that is for unbypassed re for bypassed re we will be getting hie parallel r1 parallel r2 we can replace this hie by using beta re as well or r pi as well by using different models so once we get the value of ri calculated FL is known to us, we can easily calculate the value of C1. We will standardize that particular value C1 and with the rating not by power but by voltage. So we will take VCC as the rated voltage for C1. Okay, let us move further for output coupling capacitor. For output coupling capacitor, the same procedure we will follow, but here we will be getting different value of the resistance. That value of resistance is generally RC only. If load resistance is given, then we'll have to take RC parallel RL. If the dynamic output resistance is given then we'll have to consider rc parallel that dynamic output resistance parallel to load resistance rl so whatever value which are given take that value and make use in this your calculation okay once we get the value of ro we will put this value over here we will make sure that c2 is a standard value from that standard value chart will give you'll be getting the value of c2 so c2 slash vcc volts that will be your standard value for c2 then we will move for the last calculation that is nothing but your bypass capacitance so for bypass capacitance we will use the same formula 1 upon 2 pi fl into re dash now in this particular case we will take the value of equivalent resistance calculated from the emitter side now from the emitter side we will be getting the resistance as r1 parallel r2 plus beta re that particular resistance is nothing but the series combination of rb and beta re that is nothing but hie from the emitter side then we will say that we have to shift the resistance at the base side towards the emitter side that's why we have divided that value r1 parallel r2 plus beta re or hie by 1 plus beta okay parallel to re because re resistance is applied so that re is in parallel with this particular combination whatever value you will be getting as re dash will put that value in this particular value then we will be getting the value of ce so we will standardize again the value of ce once we get the standardized value of ce make sure that your rating of this ce is vcc by 2 volts so this is how the design procedure is concerned as far as design procedure is concerned 
we all know that once we calculated all the parameters we will standardize all the parameters we will put that values in our initial circuit and then our design is perfect now the question arises if we have multiple stages of bjt's or fat's then what to do what we'll have to do we will have to split that expected voltage gain into n number of parts equal parts we will take that particular voltage gain design first last stage of your amplifier suppose we have three stage amplifier then you have to design third step initially then design second step and then design first stage considering the fact that av1 is equal to av2 is equal to av3 this is the simplest way to design the multi stage amplifier so once you are thorough with the design steps of amplifier you can easily go for the multi stage amplifier design so this is from my side learn more and more edc along with me along with ekda videos subscribe this channel of ekda videos and also you can comment on this particular video thank you so much